They look like the homes of the rich and famous. Glamorous, multi-million dollar mansions in stunning locations. I have a name in my house, La Maison de Rêve. The house of dreams. But movie stars don't live there. Are you financially independent like I am? I know what the heck I'm talking about. They're some of America's biggest mega church pastors. Faith comes to a climax and produces. Like Kenneth Copeland, who lives in this six million dollar complex outside Dallas. You may think that house is too big. I don't care what you think. I came across this story that talked about how these famous televangelists are able to avoid paying property taxes on their mansions. Now, before getting into this story, I want to say that I am not against biblical prosperity. I truly believe that God wants us to live an abundant life. When I say abundance, the first thing that people think about is materialistic. In my mind, yes. I don't think God has any issues with us being blessed because he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Proverbs talks about how the liberal soul will be made fat. The Bible has plenty to say when it comes to finance. Jesus said, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, get run over. Paul talks about how we should be cheerful givers. But you have to understand something. We are blessed to be a blessing. God has blessed all of us to be a blessing. So I am not against biblical prosperity. I think God has a will for each and every single one of us. I always reference the parable of the talents, the 10, the five, and the one. We all have different giftings and different abilities. And in this American system, those giftings, those talents, and those abilities can generate different levels of income. That's why I don't believe in socialism. That's why I don't believe in communism. I don't believe in equity. I believe in this capitalistic system that we have in America. But unfortunately, unfortunately, too many preachers who come from this prosperity angle seem to have all the wealth, but people in their congregation can still be struggling. They look like the homes of the rich and famous. Glamorous, multi-million dollar mansions in stunning locations. I have a name in my house, La Maison de Rêve, the house of dreams. But movie stars don't live there. Are you financially independent like I am? I know what the heck I'm talking about. They're some of America's biggest mega church pastor. Now we know the Inside Edition has probably parsed and cherry picked some of the elements of the sermons that were made by some of these televangelists. Nevertheless, the Bible talks about to shun the appearance of evil. We don't want to give the world any reason to question the authenticity of our faith at all, period. Faith comes to a climax and produces. Like Kenneth Copeland, who lives in this $6 million complex outside Dallas. You may think that house is too big. I don't care what you think. You want to know how big it is? It's 40,000 square foot. And Reverend Jesse DePlantis, who lives in this mega mansion outside New Orleans. To protect it from recessions and depressions. Just trying to get, grab as much money as they can. It's pure greed. Critics like Pete Evans of the televangelist watchdog group, the Trinity Foundation, say these preachers are using a legal way to avoid paying property taxes on their pricey homes. You and I are financing their rich lifestyles. Tax records show that each of these mansions is owned by the preacher's churches, which qualify. Now, I'm very familiar with the parsonages that churches provide to preachers. But that was more of a denominational thing from what I've known in the past as part of the Methodist church, for example, and some in the Baptist church. But to get away from not having to pay property taxes by having the houses connected to the church, I just don't think that's a good look, personally. them to be tax-free under the parsonage exemption. The parsonage tax exemption is a way for a church or religious organization to buy a piece of residential property 
have their pastor live in it, and then not pay property taxes on that parsonage. It's essentially a way to make the pastor's life a little bit easier and can live a little bit cheaper. Political scientists. And there's nothing wrong with that because the pastor, a real pastor, will be serving the people. A real pastor will not be out here trying to get rich by milking the congregation. But unfortunately, too many people get into preaching to milk the congregation. How many times have we been to a church where the pastor is driving the Rolls Royce, where the pastor is driving the nicest car in the lot? So many people are in the pulpit, but they have not been called. You understand? They have called themselves. God has not called them to preach. Band pastor Ryan Burge believes the exemption should be used to help out pastors like Jason Fishburne, who lives in a more modest home with his wife and family where they host church events. Everything from hosting gatherings to letting people come stay when they're in crisis, um, making meals for people out of your kitchen. It's the kind of job that really becomes more of a lifestyle in, in many ways. They say what little money they save on their property taxes is crucial to help make ends meet. Things will be much tighter for us, for sure, without the exemption. But take a look at these mega church pastor examples. This home, owned by Redemption Church, where Pastor Ron Carpenter lives, is listed for sale on Redfin for almost $8 million. If you have a multi-million dollar house, your property tax bill could be thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. But if it's classified as a parsonage, now you don't have to pay property taxes on that home. That $50,000 could pay the salary of an elementary school teacher in your local public school. But according to tax records, the church paid no property taxes on it last year. Pastors Ivy and Bridget Hilliard live in this Spring, Texas complex owned by New Light Church World. When I fly to my home and I see it, I was just spread out and I look at all that God has blessed me with and I think I thought about walking off. I'm glad I... Chris Mo. That's another thing too. A lot of these prosperity kind of preachers, right? The ones that really don't preach the word of God, that don't teach about biblical prosperity they don't teach about sowing and reaping they don't teach about how god wants us to prosper and the reason for us to prosper see the bible says in second corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 that god is able to make all grace come to us in abundance so that we may always and under all circumstances and whatever need be self-sufficient god is able to make all grace come to us in abundance and grace is is the charisma, the empowerment for us to accomplish his will, plan, and purposes here on the earth. In my heart, this is me. This is my opinion. My opinion. God does not want us worshiping mammon, money over him. And God does not want us to glorify what we have over him. These things, if God has really blessed us with these things, he's blessed us with these things to help others. God's heart is always about others not about us if our preachers in the pulpit and they're constantly talking about finances run for the hills leave that church now if he's talking about how to prosper biblically that's okay because god is about us prospering biblically but i'll say it again the reason for that is for us to be a blessing to others not ourselves not ourselves the intent is never for us to be so blessed to where we live in too much because, you know, it's the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. I expect for us to have things in abundance. That's how you can bless other people. But don't make a mockery of it. Don't be so over the top with it that people think that God is a genie. They think that if you give this X amount of dollars, God is going to give you a return. God is not a genie. You understand? Wait, amen, amen. Records show it's worth $8 million, but they paid no property taxes last year. And this creature pad may be the biggest of all the parsonages in America. The mansion behind me is where Pastor Jesse DePlantis lives. It's located outside New Orleans, and he has said it cost about $20 million to build. And he often brags about all the valuable artwork inside. But records from last year show neither DePlantis nor his church 
paid a single cent in taxes on this property. I have the biggest house of any preacher in America. I'm saying that on television. You don't think they're going to nail me next week when I get home. DePlantis didn't return our calls or emails, so we caught up with him in this Georgia church parking lot. We wanted to ask you if you're paying property taxes on your mansion in Louisiana. To me, those houses look more like a fortress than an open door. So, if these pastors were paying property tax on their mansions, I wonder how much that would be. Oh, I came across this article that will actually talk about how much they would pay if they were to pay property taxes on these properties. If these televangelists had to pay taxes on their property, this is what they would have to pay. So this is Pastor David E. Taylor's church parsonage near Tampa. He purchased it through his church, he saves over $150,000 in annual property taxes. In April of 2022, the Kingdom of God Global Church purchased a parsonage for Taylor at a cost of $8.3 million. Let that sink in, $8.3 million. Before the church purchased the mansion, the Hillsboro County Florida property tax on the property was $155,715.20. But after the purchase, the property tax dropped to just $1,404.11. Wow, what a discount. And according to Hillsboro County's tax assessor website, the 2023 tax has still not been paid. Let's go to the next one. Ron Carpenter. California might be the most common location for million dollar parsonages due to the state's inflated real estate prices. Interesting. So California's guide to the state property tax exemptions for religious organizations says parsonages are exempt when the primary residence of clergy for example, pastor, minister, rabbi, imam, or priest, when the use of the property is incidental to and reasonably necessary to accomplish the nonprofit religious organization's exempt purpose. A $7 million parsonage, reasonably necessary. And of Copeland. He lives in a parsonage located on Prime Lakefront Real Estate near Fort Worth, Texas. 18,279 square feet is this mansion. And when compared to other luxury homes in Tarrant County, the parsonage appears to be appraised below market value. Interesting. And then when they appraised it at 10 million in 2020, Copeland's church challenged the appraisal, even though the property was tax exempt. And look at that. The following year, Tarrant County dropped this appraisal valuation by almost $5 million. And now the property tax exempt parsonage was appraised at $6 million something in 2023. And so the property tax on that would have been $106,801 and some cents. The Texas tax code restricts parsonages to one acre of land. Therefore, the adjacent plot of land owned by Copeland's Eagle Mountain International Church doesn't receive a parsonage exemption. Instead, a 35.6 acres of property receives an agricultural exemption. Wow. No way. No way. The church owes only, is that right? $37.89 in property tax for the Wow. I'm going through this because it's not to question these, these, these men. I'm not a channel to talk about false prophets, false preachers, and all those things. I believe the Lord is going to reveal that to whomever. I tell you the truth of the found in the word of God, 
And I respect you enough to have a relationship with Jesus, or have a relationship with God, to have the ability to discern what exactly is going on. But when I read something like that, my mind immediately goes to how many people in urban centers would love to have some of the resources that these televangelists have. I'll just leave it at that. Jesse Duplantis. So in 2015, while preaching at the Southwestern Believers Convention, Duplantis joked about how his parsonage will be destroyed on Judgment Day. God will burn it down. Then Duplantis said, to build that house is 500 a square foot. It's 40,000 square foot. You do the math. He exaggerated the size of his plantation style home. When the parsonage was under construction, the St. Charles Herald God reported the home consists of 22,039 square feet of living space, in addition to 12,947 square feet of accessory areas, such as outdoor patios and garages. If it wasn't tax exempt and was appraised at $20 million, which is the amount Duplantis says it's worth, the property tax will be approximately $122,000. Property tax rates are lower in Louisiana because the state has an income tax unlike its neighbor, Texas. Let's go here. Ah, Ivy Hilliard. Televangelist Ivy Hilliard, who founded New Light Church in 1984 lives in the church-owned 24,939-square-foot mansion, which is part of an eight-residence housing compound. This dude lives on a housing compound, man. <sighs> in 2023, Harris County, Texas, appraised New Light Church's eight-house compound at $7,966,887. By using the parsonage tax exemption, Hilliard and the other residents avoided paying an estimated $152,168 in property taxes. And the last one. Televangelist Peter Popoff, word for the world church, owns a parsonage in Bradbury, California. There's California again, which is for sale at $7.3 million. Because of the parsonage tax exemption, Popoff saves approximately $39,000 in property taxes. Oh, in 1986, he was busted in an expose that aired on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, which revealed that information Popoff claimed to receive from God was actually transmitted to him by his wife via a radio earpiece. Kind of reminds me of Simon the Sorcerer in Acts chapter 8, when he saw that the Holy Spirit was being transmitted by the laying on of hands of the apostles, Peter, to be specific, he asked to buy that gift. He wanted to purchase it so that he could sell it because he was used to making money off of his sorcery. There's a lot of witchcraft going on in the body of Christ. In the last days, there's going to be strong delusion. I pray, I pray, I pray that the body of Christ will not be deceived. Like I said, I'm not against biblical prosperity. I believe that God wants all of us to have life and life more abundantly. But abundance does not just mean materialistic things. Abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance of connection. If you have a million dollars, but your family is broken up. If you have a million dollars, but you don't have peace, you can't sleep at night. Is that living a life of prosperity?